Here we go, question number one. What do chefs and musicians have in common? Um, <laughs> where do we start? Uh, they, they all tend, tend to be misfits that can't really function in everyday society, both of them. They, you know, they, 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 they tend to prefer living in the night time. They don't work in normal hours. They usually drink too much, smoke too much, and just do too much. <laughs> and, uh, um, but also, in a, in a good sense, uh, when you go to a good kitchen, a kitchen that works really well, there's usually a really great sense of camaraderie. You know, like uh, uh, you kind of look out for each other and you have a team and you're all together. And that's what musicians are like when it works really, really well together. You're all dependent on each other to get to the one goal. When you're a chef, it's getting the service done on the night. And when you're a musician, it's to have the performance on the night. And I think there's a very similar, similar atmosphere. What is so special with Greek street food? Well, it's very special for me. I, 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 my father's Greek and uh, I grew up when I was a kid going to Greece every year and uh, I used to love the way that Greek people ate compared to the way that British people ate. Because British people eat in this, uh, well not so much now, but when I was a kid they used to eat in this uh, very selfish way. Or not, not selfish, but self-contained way. You'd have your plate in front of you and you uh, would never share anything. It was, it was almost like a chore to eat your dinner. Whereas you'd go to Greece and you'd have all these flavors and they'd all be on the table and all spread out and everybody would reach out and share things. And it seemed like a social experience and something that was fun. And so for me, I still associate eating in Greece with enjoying food rather than having to do it. Next question. Empty fridge, cooking at home. Ah, yes. I'd forgotten I'd written about this, yeah. Um, uh, when you tour as a musician, you never get to cook, obviously. You're, you're always away in different places and you have to eat out. And uh, if you get back from tour and you've been away for six weeks or seven weeks or something like that, and you open the fridge, it's, it's fairly forlorn. You know, it's empty. If you're lucky, it's empty. <laughs> if you've left something in it, it's pretty disgusting. But. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite a lonely feeling when you get back to your flat after a long tour and there's nothing there. So you go out, go to the market, cheer yourself up, get some nice ingredients. It, it's a real treat for me to get to cook when I go, come home. And especially to cook for my friends as well. I still think eating's the best social experience you can have. Like you can't beat having sort of like nine or ten friends around a table all eating together. and. That's what I really love to do when I come home, is to have lots of friends around and to, and to cook for them. Yeah. And I cook different things, but I don't really follow recipes. I just like to get whatever ingredients are in season and just make something on that day with them. But I love Indian food as well. I love cooking in, Indian recipes. Um, pizza on the road. Yeah, unfortunately, that's often uh, the only thing that you can eat is a pizza. You know, when you finish a gig, it's, uh, I don't know, it's like three o'clock in the morning by the time loadouts happen. And if you're lucky, the only thing you can find is, is a bit of pizza. Let's do the next one. Haggis or souvlaki? Wow. <laughs> Which one am I going to go for? I, I'm a uh, battle between the two routes. Um, I'd say both. I'd say both, you know, like uh, I couldn't have life without either. Haggis is a really underrate, an underrated dish as well. It's uh, if you get a good haggis, it's it's really. I, I I don't know if everybody knows what haggis is in France. Is it commonly known? Do you think? In uh, Scotland, it's uh, the local meat, which was sheep, and so it's a sheep stomach that's been stuffed with oatmeal and the offcuts of the meat, and it tends to be quite spicy. And uh, Scotland's national poet uh, Robert Burns uh, wrote a really wonderful poem. Uh, about the haggis to a haggis, which uh, I'm not going to recite just now. <laughs> His knife, say rustic labour dacht, and cut you up we on his slacht, trenching your gushing entrails bracked like on a ditch. And then, oh what, a glorious sect.
composing a dish versus writing a song. Um, it's funny, I was just talking about how I don't like following recipes. And I think that's the same for how I feel about writing songs as well. When I first started playing the guitar, I found it very frustrating learning other people's songs. Uh, I could do it, but I don't know, I just found it very restrictive. And the first thing I wanted to do was write my own songs and go my own direction. And I still feel the same about food. Uh, it's nice to learn recipes so you understand the principle of making food, but you really enjoy it when you start making up your own. I think it's, it's, it's best to understand the principle of flavors and how things combine together. I think understanding ingredients is way more important than understanding a recipe. And I'd say the same for music as well. Understanding the principles of music is way more important than understanding uh, how to play somebody else's music exactly. Yeah, anyone can do that. It's more fun to come up with something new. Can music influence cooking? and vice versa. Yeah, you know, like, uh, if you're in a kitchen and you've got good music playing, you definitely enjoy your experience more than if you've got bad music or no music playing. I love to have music in the kitchen. Um, Bob, our bassist uh, in Franz Ferdinand, and I used to work in a kitchen together as chefs, and uh, a lot of the, the formation of Franz Ferdinand happened in that kitchen when we would we would stand and talk about the music that we were listening to and what we loved about it and uh, what moved us and what we hated about it. And then it made us realize what we wanted to do with our own music, you know, and uh, that came about from listening to music in a kitchen. Can cooking influence music? Maybe, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> maybe. Where does my music come from? Um, it comes from here, then here, then here. And a bit of here. <laughs> Playing on stage versus being in the rush in the kitchen. Yeah, it's a very similar buzz. You know, you, you definitely get a thrill from it. Um, and if you fuck up, it goes horribly wrong. <laughs> like it was a terrible feeling, but... Uh, but when it, when it goes right, it's, it's the best feeling in the world. And you do get a good buzz from being in the kitchen and the service coming together, but it's not as good as being on stage. Being on stage is it's the best feeling in the world. You know, nothing, nothing comes near it, nothing comes near it.